Welcome back to Primary Source Trend Investment. We're on show H4, and we're getting ready for the holiday season. I hope everybody else is. And we wanted to talk a little bit about what might be happening next year in China on the investment front, because there's a lot of talk about COVID, and you don't need to hear that from us. But what might be happening in terms of investment on the equity and fixed income side? But before we get to that, we need to talk a little bit about what happened year to date for equities and fixed income. So ASHR, as you all know, the ETF traded here in the US, which tracks the CSI 300, is down 27% year to date. Obviously, not great. On the fixed income side, CBON, really the only true proxy for China fixed income, is down about 10%. This roughly tracks with renminbi depreciation year to date. We also talk about other quoted ETFs on the show a lot. One is MCHI, down 24.2. The other is KWEB down 17. There's also some smart beta and some active management. So RAYC, a smart beta ETF, was down 31%. And there's a Matthews active fund, which looks a lot like MCHI, and that also failed to outperform. So what do we have here today? Beta was negative, alpha was somehow more negative, and fixed income failed. So what can we expect from next year? So, Penghua, I have three themes from next year. Maybe you have others, but we'll talk about them one by one. The first is weaker dollar vis-a-vis RMB, or in other words, RMB appreciation. The second is a strong financial sector in China. And the third is the consumer, the China consumer is still very, very wary. So which one do you want to take first? Let's uh, always take uh, about uh, the currency, <laughs> which is uh, have a big impact for all the investments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because remember, we are investing in the U.S. In U.S., we go in in U.S. dollar, we go into renminbi, and then when we come out, we're back to U.S. dollar. So we do have this uh, FX exposure. So weaker dollar renminbi appreciation. So we've already seen U.S. dollar depreciate four and a half percent. CNY, RMB, touched 7.3 a few weeks ago, and now it's already under 7. So that's a huge move in a short period of time after what was huge renminbi depreciation, 10% or 12% even, and then now it's back to about uh, 9%, something like that. Um, firstly, from the uh, uh, technical chart, it's quite clear. So the renminbi in the uh, 2022 uh, have the uh, big uh, depreciation. So it's a, te- uh, a perfect uh, match, the technical uh, things. But the recent the high volatility, I think is more related to uh, driving the um, uh, fundamental change. So it's really the market, uh, as soon as uh, they heard uh, the big uh, change of news, uh, and then they were due uh, uh, to show the high volatility. That really means uh, uh, when uh, we can go to relative uh, stable area uh, in the next year. So that is uh, we are uh, looking for. So in that relative stable area, that probably means uh, uh, is a fair exchange rate accepted by all the uh, domestic and the international society. So that will probably keep a relevant uh, stable environment to do the uh, investment. So that's the first thing that I want to see. Hmm. That should be a huge rebound for China fixed income, right? Because if you have stable currency, well, you let's just say we have no no more renminbi depreciation and maybe some renminbi appreciation. And then we're going to get the pure return. If you have low volatility, you're going to get the pure 5% out of CBON, something like that. So Yeah, that really means uh, integrated the currency exchange strategy in the uh, bond investment. Mm. Well, it, you know, in a low interest rate, you're still low for China, right? Low interest rate environment. When you have uh, currency moving more than the, annual eyes return it's it's a hard place to hang out but next year we see a little bit less volatility maybe see some rmb appreciation which would help us dollar investors into renminbi that's true hmm. so the second is um let, let's take the the financial services sector in china because again my personal opinion there's a lot of places you can hang out if you want to buy equity you know you can buy china merchants at a 7 pe and a four percent Dividend yield, you can buy ICBC, similar, 4 PE, 7% yield. Ping An, huge financial services entity, it's an 8.6% PE, yield of 
dividend yield of more than five. So there's a lot of areas. And then you're going to have the end of tightening for China on the PBOC side. So financial service is probably a good place to hang out. And also you have a lot of the, uh, I won't say the property developers have reached a solution, but there's at least less downside uh, facing the, the property developers going forward. Uh, yeah, you mentioned this uh, financial sector is definitely a good point. So that really means uh, uh, where's the engine for the China in the next year? So uh, as soon as uh, you figure out that the, each sector, probably most likely owning the real estate sectors <laughs> could be the engine again. <laughs> Unfortunately, we unfortunately, back, that's right. We talk that. about a lot of this in the previous show, and from the recent situations, and that's a, uh, um, we only see the all the bad news uh, get a price in the uh, uh, real estate the price, and uh, not of the uh, countries' uh, policies uh, uh, support as well as the local uh, policies support. Looks like, uh, uh, according to Wang Ke. Uh, their CEO Union said the real estate uh, business is the uh, best uh, mm, uh, time for the in the past 20 years probably <laughs> back to the engine again yeah, they all sound, they sound like in the US all those crypto all those crypto people yeah it's a great time to buy crypto but you know if you're a developer it's always a good time to be in the real estate industry of course he has a <laughs> he has a, a vested interest in in saying that but you know, yeah, I would like to say it's better to uh, hopefully they can get out of the hole uh, at this time or at least uh, reduce uh, the loss and also uh, can be more sustainable uh, growth. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, the, that, that's the big point. There's, there's very, the, the, the risk of downside is, has been blunted and the opportunity for upside is probably there, which brings us to the last point, which you know we talked about in the past, some of the savings rate in China. I think that the, the Chinese consumer is still going to uh, be patient and be wary until well into 2023. What's your thoughts on the consumer? Uh, consumer, I think uh, due to the COVID, uh, the consumer uh, demand get uh, locked uh, at home. Uh, so as soon as uh, uh, they survive this round of the uh, COVID, uh, so people should uh, uh, back to the normal uh, life. So most of the uh, uh, consumer demand will be released into the market. But uh, right now, and uh, China also focus on the domestic uh, uh, consumption demand. Right. So that is very important for them. And all the government uh, have many incentive policy mm, and organize many activities. So all of this will promote the uh, consumption. Lots of time we said that the travel sector yeah, will get yeah. up. <laughs> USC, that's already get up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But one one thing to be cautious of is just because policy changes doesn't mean behavior is changing. Because you know, anecdotally, we're hearing a lot of people are are self isolating. They're saying, "Well, I don't, I don't really want to go out." And we saw that a lot in the U.S. too. People, you know, the 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 bad news about COVID and and people don't want to get it. And you know, now we're hearing crazy stories about you know. Uh, uh, 800 million people could get COVID in the next 90 days. I mean, these these projections, I'm not going to comment on those, but people do hear those that kind of news and they will modify their own behavior regardless of what policy says. So if people modify their behavior, they're going to modify their spending as well. Yeah, uh, that's true. So, and also this will get a big impact to that. And overall, if you see China, uh, different sectors, uh, overall, it looks like a, uh, 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 middle small uh, cap uh, uh, like sector like the uh, uh, Jungjun 500, so which is uh, uh, in better shape than the CS 300. That yeah. means the small uh, cap will have more opportunities than large cap uh, companies in China. Sure. Well, we're going to leave it there this week. Want to wish everybody a happy holidays, happy new year. We'll probably take a couple of weeks off to celebrate here, and we'll see you in the new year. Happy holidays, happy new year to everyone. Thank you so much.